everybody, welcome back to today's plug and coding tutorial video. This is for sure not the third time I've tried to record this video in the past five minutes. How are you doing everybody? Hopefully you're doing well. Today we're going to be checking out how to add block break and block place events to your my into your Minecraft spigot plugin. Today we're going to be checking out some pretty cancel, pretty easy cancel events and we'll get into the hard stuff in a future episode. This time we're just checking it out and making it pretty easy. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click, click new and Java class and you're going to click block events because we're going to be making some block events this is the same way you would do with any type of events you're using um so you would name it the class you want or you could just name it events and you go from there so when you have public class block events i'm going to do implements and then this time you're instead of putting command executor you're going to do listener org.bucket.listener that's one of the most important things you can do without that you have no way it's going to work now to create your event you want to first put at event handler this is like the thing that shows that it's an event and not just a normal public void when we type in public void below it then we're going to do on block place because we're going to do that first and we're going to put the little dash the little um parentheses here and we're going to do block place event and we're going to call it e as the event name just like that that's all you got to do now in this example we're just going to be canceling the event so we're going to do e dot set canceled true all I gotta do now that the event is canceled no one can place any blocks when our plugin is running and we're gonna do the exact same thing we're gonna put event handler again we're gonna do public void on block break we're gonna do block break event and we're gonna also call it e just to keep it organized and we're gonna do e dot set canceled true that's all you got to do for this first step that is actually creating your event where you cancel the event and it cancels itself and you just canceled it like that now we're going to go back to our main plugin we're going to do what we did down here with the register commands but we're going to call it public void and we're going to do register listeners well, we're going to call it regular event because i can't spell and i'll mess stuff up so we're just going to keep it like that and we're going to do plugin manager and we're going to call it pm equals this dot get server you can do you can oh you can just get rid of this and you can get it just use this got the get server dot get plugin manager so all you got to do keep that just at your top press alt enter and import the class just like that then you're going to go ahead and do and then all you got to do to add your events is do pm dot register event register events and you're going to do new the class name in this case it's block events and then you're gonna do this and call it this just like that that's all you got to do all you got to do is that now ah yes you do need to put this here that's an important thing put the parentheses right after block events now what this is doing it's registering our class block events and this is gonna run these two event handlers whenever this plugin starts up now you may be wondering or do we have to put it up here we do we have to put register events into our on enable once it turns yellow here it means it's being called for from here and once we know this class name is no longer grayed out and these are not grayed out, we know they're being called for as well. That way, we got everything ready. The only thing we got to do now is switch our plugin version from, we can get rid of this API version. We're not going to use that in here. And we're going to, um, our project version, here's a little fun fact, is actually located in our palm.xml file. This, you can change your version right here to whatever you want and save. That way, it updates in your plugin.yml that it's version 2.0.2 .2 instead of 0.1. To build your project, you're just going to go build artifacts and rebuild. This will rebuild the jar that you already created a little while ago. If there's any errors, it would pop up, or if there's any warnings, it would pop up. I'm going to pause the video, open up our server, and I can show you what we just did. So here we are in our server files. We're going to copy where we exported the jar to to our, new, um, to our server, and we're going to start up the server. And then we're going to go ahead and join localhost on our um on our um minecraft client that we have now if everything went right and we did this all right our plugin's gonna load just like normal we can do slash about tutorial one and it's gonna show that it's plugin version 0 0.2 just like i showed you where you change it in the palm that xml xy the palm file i'm just gonna call it the palm file from now on just like we i showed you where we've switched it in the palm file it's gonna show up there which means if we did everything right, we're not going to be able to break any blocks. This is because we set the event to canceled. This also means we won't be able to place any blocks. So now you can't place any blocks. 
So this example is what people use in like hub servers where you're not able to break any blocks. It just doesn't break. We actually have a plugin just for this called build mode available on MC market and spigot MC. So yes, those are available on spigot and MC market. You can get the build mode download down in the description. Now this isn't all we're going to do in this video. We're also going to go ahead and set a permission. So if you have a permission, you can bypass this. So let's open up our tutorial uh, plugin. Once again, we're going to go back to our block place. Um, our block place thing over here. This time we're going to do if, ah, uh, almost forgot this. We're going to do player, which is going to get the player who's running the thing. So player p equals e dot get player. Just like that. And alt enter, of course, to automatically forward that. This is going to get the player. You're going to need this in everything. So we're going to take this down here, paste it in there because we're going to need it in a second. Anyway, now we're going to do what we did back here, back here in the command class. We're going to do if player or sender, in this case, has permission tutorial one. But we're going to call it something different. So we're going to say if player, or we're going to put p dot has permission, and we're going to name it block break dot use let's say or block place for example then we're gonna do e dot set cancelled false then we're gonna do this right here we're gonna call and we're gonna do this we're gonna say else boom ah here's what I'm noticing is gonna go wrong what we're gonna do is instead of doing this we are gonna do this an easier way to keep it clean we're going to put an exclamation point right in front of the P here. What this does is this says if the player does not have this permission, it would set the event as canceled. The reason why we do this is it's just way neater to put an exclamation point in front to say if the player doesn't have the permission, they're not going to be able to do it. So we're going to copy what we put here, just down here to our block break command or event. And we're just going to switch it to block break dot use. We're going to get rid of the second event canceled there. So we're going to keep it just like this. Now we have this set up, so it's just normal. I don't know why it's formatting like that, but we got that set up like that. Now, if you're wondering, why does my players who have op can bypass this? This is because op has every single permission on the server, and there's no way to avoid that. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild this, and we're going to test it out. My account here has full op permissions. I have every single player, and I have every single command in the server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this plugin to the server and we're going to restart it. If I'm able to place and block, place and break um, blocks once I reload the server, we know our plugin is working correctly because it's successfully using our permission system we set up to get the um, placement and breaking of the block from the player. So I'll be right back and I'm going to go ahead and fix that up for us. All right, so I went ahead and reloaded the server after uploading the new server jar to the server. Now we can test if we're able to place and break blocks, we know that us as ourselves can. So let's go ahead and try that. See, we can now place and break blocks. But the way to test this if we can't is we're going to go ahead and deop myself from being an OP operator. Now, if I try to break or place blocks, it's not going to let me do this. This is exactly what we were aiming for. It's not going to let us break or place any blocks to the ground when uh, using the when registering the event in the class. So let's review what we did during this um, uh, bleh, this tutorial. We created a new uh, event class where we uh, are calling it block events, which is going to avoid keep anybody without the permission block place dot use or block place dot break block break dot use and block place dot use or if they have operator, which is OP in Minecraft. Um, if they don't have that, they're not going to be able to block or place any blocks. So if they do have that, like I've shown down below, you're going to be able to block and place the break, the blocks. So that's the first thing we did. The second thing we did is we went ahead and registered our event in the main.yml, the main.class file. So this means that we registered it. It's going to run every single time the server starts up, and it's going to keep anybody from breaking the blocks. The final thing we learned in today's video is how to change your version number when using the software Minecraft development, the plugin inside IntelliJ. And um, we changed it to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. And we didn't modify our command at all, but we are going to modify this in the next video. We're going to set up a configure file to set up the config for the messages that are sent here. And we'll also make a message when the player cannot break the block. You get the message from the configure file, and you um, go ahead and send that instead of 
any message here. So it's um, pretty simple, this video, quick, quick little 10-minute video on how to set up the um, events for block place and block break events. So without op, you can place and break blocks. Uh, you won't be able to place or break blocks, which is very useful for in-game stuff. If you want a full tutorial on how to make like a build mode plugin, I'm happy to leave that down below. I can even add a speed tutorial of our one of our past recodes of it. So you're ha you're free feel free ugh, feel free to go check that out. The link will be in the description of this video to that video. Um, hopefully you do enjoy these plugin to coding tutorial videos. I'm aiming to make more of them in the next week or so, depending on how big my availability is. I do have PSAT testing this week, so I'll be a little less uploady currently but starting in a few weeks when i come on summer vacation in just over a month we will have major updates with major videos daily and hopefully we can really start growing the tutorials on this channel that allow us to um run all of the plugins in minecraft if you have any questions feel free to join the discord we'll be happy to help you out there if you have errors with your code make sure to check out that too um before we leave today we're going to do the same thing we do in every single one of our videos we're going to go to vcs we're going to press commit right here and here's what we're going to do we are going to name this commit. We're going to say we've added block events and added event listeners event registration. So this is going to be our like history, which we're going to see here. And then you're going to click this little up barrel and press commit and push. And you're going to click that. Then you're just going to click push once more, and it's going to be actually uploaded to your GitHub database. And you'll see this. It was rejected because they need to be merged. You're going to press merge here. If that pops up, it means something was added on your newest one. In my case, it was a readme.file, which I added after I uploaded it on GitHub. So I actually downloaded that from the internet and pushed it up. So, um, yes. So that is it. It's been pushed to the database, and you can see that it created the readme file and it uploaded the new event block break event files. When this turns from green to just plain white, it means it's the up-to-date version on GitHub. It's the newest thing and everything's working exactly how designed. If you don't, if you have the free version, you're gonna have to do this manually, sadly, but if you want a tutorial on how to do that, I will f happily make one later this week on how to upload manually to GitHub your uh, Minecraft projects. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord. My name is Noodles, and I'll see you in the next coding tutorial later this week. Goodbye.